During the 1930s and 40s, people with intellectual disabilities were discriminated against. They weren't seen as important or worthy. They were put into institutions in which they were treated like prisoners. When Eunice Kennedy Shriver took a stand for people with intellectual disabilities, she freed a group of people from the prison they were in and changed their lives forever. But by taking a stand, she not only changed the lives of those with intellectual disabilities and their families, she changed the lives of millions of people who got the chance to interact with them. She changed their perspective from disabled to athlete and from unworthy to worthy. Eunice's actions took place during a time when many in the country did not feel worthy. During the 1950s and 60s, the Civil Rights Movement was at its highest point. The United States was a divided nation in the fight for African American rights. No one knew the other group of people who were mistreated, put away, abused, and hidden. People were not aware of the mistreatment they were going through, and with lack of awareness came lack of empathy. People with these disabilities were put into institutions because their families saw them as a disgrace and were embarrassed to have them in their families. What was a family back then if they didn't want their own children? No one knew how much of a difference one woman could have on the world. Eunice Kennedy Shriver was born in 1921 into the Kennedy family, a family of wealth and power. She was the middle child of nine. She was a competitive and a fun-loving child who was always up for a challenge and from a young age wanted to make a difference. Although she had the drive and determination, she may not have had the chance to change the world without her older sister, Rosemary. Rosemary had mild intellectual and behavioral disabilities. Because families in this time saw these children as a disgrace, she was sent away to St. Coletta Institution in Wisconsin, where she spent most of her life. Eunice saw that her older sister didn't have the same opportunities that she had and was angry. Olympics and really came out of uh, my observation of my sister Rosemary. When I can remember my mother saying that there was no place, say 45 years ago, where you could go, and there was nobody to talk to. Somewhere in that love of your own sister, an enormous anxiety and, and anger at the way the culture was treating her, uh, my mother uh, developed her revolutionary passion to change. She took it upon herself to give her sister and others like her the opportunity to compete. In 1953, Eunice married the love of her life, Robert Sargent Shriver. They became happily married and together continued to strive for their greatest. Later, she was filled with more joy in her life because of her five children, who followed in their mother's footsteps too. In 1946, the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation was established by parents Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. and Rose Kennedy. The foundation was created in memory of the Kennedy's oldest son who died in a plane crash. This foundation was the first foundation that was devoted to the benefit of people with intellectual disabilities. Even though Eunice had other jobs and degrees, she always had a desire to help those with intellectual disabilities and knew that she could reach people and spread awareness through the foundation. In 1957, Eunice took over direction of the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation. The following year, Eunice and her husband went all around the United States, visiting institutions and spreading awareness. Although she was a driving force, Eunice couldn't have done nearly as much without help from her family. When her brother, John F. Kennedy, was elected president in 1960, Eunice took advantage of the opportunity and was always trying to influence her brother to help her raise awareness for those with intellectual disabilities. Raising awareness for those with intellectual disabilities became a top priority. 3% of the children grow up mentally retarded. Can you imagine that 2% of our children live in mental retardation who could be saved if we had the program and the recognition of the need? And those of us who have seen children live in the shadow know that a country as rich as ours can't possibly justify this neglect. In a short amount of time, many things happened, including the establishment of the President's Panel on Mental Retardation, with Eunice playing an important role, and a few years later, launching the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. He wrote an article for the Saturday Evening Post titled Hope for Retarded Children that told the world about having someone who was intellectually disabled in her family and why it was so important to fight for this cause. This article was the first time that any one of the Kennedy family members acknowledged that Rosemary had intellectual disabilities. This article was read by millions of people around the country, shocking and inspiring them all. Also in 1962, through the foundation, Eunice created Camp Shriver. She invited people with intellectual disabilities and volunteers to her own backyard. 
Around 40 people had the opportunity to come, play, and compete in several games. She continued to hold the camp for a few years, and eventually they had around 100 children and an almost equal amount of counselors. The camps had a huge effect on those people who had never before had a place to shine. The one-on-one -on -one time with the counselors made them feel special and worthy. Camp Shiver was a very important step on the road to creating Special Olympics. Eunice and the Kennedy Foundation continued to hold Camp Shriver and in the following years, they continued to provide and fight for more athletic opportunities for those with intellectual disabilities. Along the way, they met Ann Burke. Ann was an instructor with the Chicago Parks District. Ann had a big impact in creating the idea of Special Olympics. Eunice and Ann began to plan a track meet in the Chicago Parks District that would resemble the Olympics. This would be the first Olympic Games made for people with special needs to show the world their talents. On July 20th, 1968, the first International Special Olympics was held at Soldier Field in Chicago. In ancient Rome, the gladiators went into the arena with these words on their lips. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Today, all of you young athletes are in the arena. Many of you will win, but even more important, I know you will be brave and bring credit to your parents and to your country. Let us begin the Olympics. Thank you. One thousand people from 26 U.S. states and Canada competed in the first Special Olympics. Today there are many competitions and people from 169 different countries competing. Long after Special Olympics was created, Eunice and her family continued to make an impact. In 1984, Eunice earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom for all her hard work. Eunice passed away in 2009, but the legacy and impact she left behind will live on forever. You see, I am a, a man with, with Down Syndrome. My life is, is worth living because Mrs. Shriver lived hers the way she did. Forty-one years ago, Mrs. Shriver started asking, why not, about the lives of people like me. Nothing has been the same since. Today, children with special needs walking around with their parents would never have been possible or would have even happened if it wasn't for her. Individuals with special needs now aren't looked down upon and they are finally part of their families. They are cherished, loved, and have units to them. Special Olympics has been transformed, remolded into something that creates millions of smiles. Athletes feel pride that they have never felt before and they get the chance to show how much they have to offer. They give it their all and make everyone around them happier. We got a chance to live in this positive environment. After only an hour, the athletes had already made an impact in our lives. Just being in the environment brought us so much joy. The small interviews we had gave us new perspectives. Just hearing about all the sports the players get the chance to enjoy was amazing. All the athletes and coaches we talked to said it was a positive environment and they loved coming because it can always make them happy and it is something to look forward to. Learning about the impact Eunice had and how much she cared opened our eyes. Eunice Kennedy Shriver took a stand for those with intellectual disabilities. But more importantly, she took a stand for a previously hidden group of people who had never had anyone to stand up for them. She helped give them an opportunity to shine and she showed the world that they were so much more than the disability that they were born with. You are the stars, and the world is watching you. By your presence, you send a message to every village, every city, every nation. A message of hope, a message of victory. The right to play on any playing field, you have earned it. The right to study in any school, you have earned it. The right to hold a job, you have earned it. The right to be anyone's neighbor. You have earned it. 